Okay, traders. Now, Monday, the 24th of October, we are seeing some major moves in dollar yen. Now, all the news wires are sort of pointing the finger at the BOJ, suspected intervention. Now, the funny thing about intervention is they either want it loud and clear and everything else, which is, that that's the whole impact of it, is to, is to get the currency, whichever one they're looking at, depending on which central bank is hitting the market, to have an impact. So to come in stealth, right, in these market conditions is actually quite stupid, right? It's pointless. It'll just bounce back to where it is. Now, just following this, this is sort of something that used to be quite regular in the markets going back um, a long time ago, but we've got some good questions here from Lee. And I thought I'd just go through a video just to give you the uh, the update here. Now, I'll just go through each of these uh, questions here because Lee's got a lot of good points and you need to understand all the different aspects. I did cover some of this in the daily or the week ahead preview, okay, about what how the BOJ could do it. They can either, you know, ring around and sort of scare scare the market by uh, just – and what they do is they just ask, where is dollar yen, right? And the, the, the trader will answer the phone and go, BOJ's asking, well, is that, you know, it only means one thing, right? So they, they just ask a question – and they get the impact they want, but that's pretty short term. Or secondly, they can come in and just uh, sell dollar yen, which actually, in fact, they're just buying yen, right? They're buying yen across the board, but they usually only jump in on the major, right? They don't go and intervene in Aussie yen, right? Dollar yen, US against the yen is where the problem is, and that flows through the rest of the majors. So just coming into these questions is when we see market manipulation, uh, like what's happening right now? Is it as simple as a central bank buying its currencies, country's own currency in large amounts in order to drive the price up? Yes, it is. That's as simple as it is, right? They come in and buy yen, right? That's what they, and they're just trying to push it, obviously push it down against the dollar, gets the biggest impact, but that's where it would start to move around against all the other major pairs as well. And we are seeing that, if I just drop the 247 trade zone there for a second, you can see the impact here. Obviously, on dollar yen's the major impact, but you can see it's uh, had a bit of an impact across the board. As I said, um, intervention, they want, it, they want everyone to know what's happening. Right? They want them to know that they're in. They want, they want impact. So to me, for the market to come out and say suspected intervention, I'd say this is a load of rubbish or they've just checked prices and the currency will go back to exactly where it was previous to the intervention. Right, because it's like a it's like a uh, like a fake intervention, but intervention generally means a central bank would intervene and buy their own currency or sell it, depending on what they're trying to do here. In this situation, the yen is weakening so much, it sort of looks bad for them. But in actual fact, they'd be sitting there cheering uh, on the sake, having a great old time. Um, Okay, so two questions. If that's the case, two questions here. First, where is the central bank getting the other currencies to buy their own, right? Well, they just come in and intervene in the market. They can do swaps with other central banks, but whatever they do on the yen in the market, they would be balancing their own. They'd have massive um, uh, portfolios, right? Currency portfolios. And they usually do deals between the central banks, between swapping out currencies. All they're really trying to do is buy the yen and get the other currencies down. I can tell you that the US would be stoked, right? Because that try, sort of brings the US economy back into the game a bit. Um, so that's what they do there. Do each central bank hold other currencies in reserve? Not really. They probably have small reserves of other currencies, but they don't, right? If they need to do something offshore, the central bank, say the, the Bank of Japan needs to do something in Australia, they'll just call up the central bank and do a transaction between the two central banks so it doesn't impact the market but they want impact here. So they'd be out there selling dollars, buying yen, and they'd probably do some sort of deal with the uh, the Fed to sort of square up their dollar holdings. Uh, or does the central bank hold foreign bonds? Okay, so this is, funnily enough, does it hold foreign, foreign bonds that it cashes in for foreign currency, then it can then use to buy its own. The You go back to the currency or trade wars, 90 to 95, right? The U.S. was strangling the, uh, the Japanese economy, especially the car manufacturers. U.S. car manufacturers putting huge pressure politically on the U.S. They end up sort of choking um, the the BOJ and, and the yen. It was a mess. But I'll tell you what, the BOJ 
or the government came out with a plan. The Japanese said, if you want to start messing with our currency, and it got pretty hectic there for a long time, we own more US treasuries than you do. So if you want to mess with us, we'll mess with the treasuries and screw up your economy. So there's, and that was probably the most hectic I've seen central banks at each other, right? And it sort of slowly dissipated. So the um, that's the sort of situation we have right now. They do have big bond portfolios. Usually everyone like China has got loads of US treasuries, right? They've probably got some of here and there and all over the place, but US treasuries, the US dollar is their biggest problem, right? It's the biggest economy. So if they're trying to sell stuff to the US, it makes sense that they've got a bit of a US portfolio, especially in the bonds. And that's where they can get the US to back off if they are putting the um, the yen under, if the yen's going through the roof. And a lot of you traders are, are only new to this, right? For years, through all the 90s, if you go back and have a look, dollar yen was around 140 to 160 thereabouts for, for, for years, Right. So being back down where it was under 100 for quite some time didn't make sense because the Japanese economy was struggling. US economy is going through the roof. It deserves to be at 150. So anyway, I think it's a political stunt. Um, and Lee saying here, if the, if the answer is bonds, uh, my second question is, wouldn't that present a strong trading opportunity to sell the same bonds that the central bank is selling? Absolutely. Right. It would be. But I don't think this is intervention. I think it's a bit of a scaremongering. Um, but if, if the Japanese came out and said, you know what, we're going to just rip into your bonds, it would be a trading opportunity on the bonds. And, and if you go back to or take it forward from, say, 90 to 95, where those trade wars really came into play uh, between the US and Japan, go back to the global financial crisis, 2007, 8, 9, where... Um, uh, Bernanke, was it, that came out, you know, asked the Goldman guys what to do. They said, just go and buy loads of bonds, mate. And it became a big bond transaction, right? So you just got to keep an eye on what the central banks are trying to achieve here. To me, the Japanese or the Bank of Japan, they're trying to achieve a political um, situation where like, yeah, we don't want dollar yen weakening too much when in actual fact they do. But the US wants to see them sort of like, you know, trying to hold it back a bit. But trying to hold the financial markets back, once the market knows what the central bank is doing, they attack them, right? So the um, either way, and they try and find the weak points in the uh, central banks. You go back to the mid-90s where I was at Citibank in London. Uh, Soros took out the Bank of England. Okay, the Bank of England ended up walking away, crushed uh, sterling. i tell you what, that was a big turning point where central banks know when to to turn off and walk away and when to come back. But um, whoever's got the biggest pockets in this game usually wins, and it's usually the central bank. Now, through years and years of intervention, the Bank of Japan have emptied their pockets. So that's why I'm thinking it's very strange that they would be intervening right now, buying yen, when what they need is they need the US numbers to sort of turn from being super strong inflation. They got weaker numbers. That's the time to jump in and intervene because the market will be fundamentally dropping on the dollar and they can really push it along jumping in trying to hold back a strong dollar when all the numbers are strong as you can imagine is quite stupid um it seems like that would be less volatile trade than trying to get it on the market manipulation that's right so what lee's saying there if they're if they're hitting the bonds right you can see where the direction's coming from as i was just saying if you know what the central bank's doing and how they're doing it whether it's through bonds or currency manipulation then you know where what to what look for and wait for and where to get in. Just simple currency market manipulation, it looks like it's a great idea. But as I said, we've seen situations where, and this is what you, what the difference is between what you're seeing right now. If I just come over here to the news page, if they want you to know, right, um, up here, right, it sort of suspects the, do, um, the Bank of Japan is involved, right? If the Bank of Japan wants to, what without even spending any money, if they come out and said, you know what, fair value for dollar yen is say 130, right? You would see a 10 cent move on dollar yen, right? But there's a bit of a rule book for the central banks, okay? You don't intervene in someone else's market, right? So 
So the Bank of Japan to be intervening during the uh, European session or the North American session is a no-no. Generally, what they used to do is the Bank of Japan, say we're right in the middle of the North American session, they would call the Fed and go, uh, Konnichiwa, get in there and sell some, buy some yen for us or sell some yen. And the Fed would go and do it for them, right? If it was in the... So that's that's the sort of general rules. The Bank of England doesn't go and intervene during the North American session or the Asian session. They wait till the London session. So there's rules there, and you don't come out and start um, setting levels, right? As I, as I was just sort of saying there, if, if they come out and said because you know dollar yen's around one what one forty eight at the moment, if they come out and said dollar yen fair value is one thirty, right? That's another no no. You don't put. You don't put levels on it unless it's an absolute must do, right? That's a panic. You're you're out of money. You've got nothing going for you. The economy is dying. That's when they would start sort of change. That's when they would start saying this is where it should be, right? So they're not going to use that day one uh, at all, right? So these are this is good, right? These are good questions, and I've got to say, Lee, that's that's a pretty thorough question you've sent through there because. You a lot of traders who are new to the markets, especially in the last sort of well five or ten years, right? I've been doing this for what is it, thirty three years. The um, you haven't seen a lot of the central banks having to intervene. If anything, they've been trying to hold these markets up um, in amongst all the zero interest rates. Now we've got inflation going mental across the board. We're seeing a rebalance in a lot of currencies. The U.S. dollar, for good reason, is going you know up through the roof. And it should because the US economy is about six months at least ahead of every, everyone else. Um, it's a pretty good sign of what's what's to come. And now we're starting to see the central bankers having to do a lot of work, trying to cool economies down, trying to not manipulate currencies, but trying to address the, the very sudden imbalances of some currency moves. Obviously, dollar yen going up 50 cents, like a third of the value or depreciating as far as the yen's concerned. That makes the US very sort of uncompetitive in the, in Japan, right? Makes Japan very competitive in the US. And that's the normal supply and demand situation that occurs in normal market environments. If you look at China, right, they don't really care. They keep devaluing their currency to try and keep themselves competitive globally, right? So that's why everyone's always been uh, arcing up about the uh, Chinese because they don't play a fair game. The Japanese do but they're just doing a bit of a political stunt. Understanding how the central banks do things is very important, okay? And you need events like this to get some sort of explanation. So good job there, Lee. It's As I said, you're going to see more of this over the next couple of years. And once you start to see, and, and that's I don't think the BRJ are intervening because, as I said, they would be publicising it, not hiding about it. The um, you start Once you start to see a central bank show their hand, you know exactly where, where the pressure points are and the direction, and then it's easy to sort of start targeting those specific instruments. But as I said, right now, this doesn't look like it because see how like these moves would be down here, all of them, but they're not. And it hasn't been confirmed. The fact that they haven't hasn't been confirmed by the Bank of Japan tells me that it's not them, right? Unless they're doing some new style of stealth uh intervention which doesn't make sense the whole idea of intervention is to get shock and awe sudden impact turn the currency around and and have an impact by doing it with not telling anyone it defeats the purpose okay that makes sense anyway if you've got any questions jump on the uh 247 trade zone there and give us a uh pop up your questions if it's a big one like this i'll do a video otherwise i'll simply answer the question and we'll go from there all right guys Hopefully that helps and uh, yeah, let me know if you need any more answers.